Hey everyone. As many of you know, I've written several books, but recently I had the great privilege of being the subject of a book in the Aussie STEM Stars series, STEM being science, technology, engineering, and maths. Uh, this is kind of different to the normal books that I've been involved with because it's actually more like a biography rather than a book about mathematics, the subject itself. And recently I had the chance to speak with Rebecca Lim, the wonderful author of this book. We had a chat and I hope you get to watch it and enjoy it now. I'm really, really pleased today to be here with Eddie Wu to talk about this book about Eddie Wu, which is fantastic. It was a pleasure to work with him on this, and um, here's Eddie. <laughs> Rebecca, thank you so much for your time. It's a real pleasure to chat with you, and I should say thank you as well uh, for creating this wonderful book. It's an incredibly well-told story. I feel a privilege to be part of it. Thanks. Okay, now I've got a few questions for you, Eddie. Um, the first one is, how does it feel to have a book written about your journey to becoming a math teacher? Yeah, thank you, Rebecca. It is really, you know, when I think of a single word that captures the entire experience, it has to be surreal. Um, I actually remember um, the first time I picked up my copy, having you know spoken with you many times and and thought about, okay, what, how are we going to tell this story? I, I imagine, you know. If I went in and watched a movie, someone's written a story and thought, okay, who's going to be the characters and what arc are they going to go through? But this is very much just reality. And when I think back on my own life, uh, I don't think many people would necessarily think, oh yeah, this would make a great novel or something like that. Um, but it is, it is quite an, a, an amazing thing to reflect back on the things that I've gone through in my life. Um, actually, one of the eerie sort of moments is, uh, you know, some of the illustrations, which I love. Um, when I had a look through, I was kind of like, whoa, this is, it was kind of like, yeah, this is exactly like, uh, you know, me and my mom as she tried to wake me up from school. <laughs> uh, I thought, yes, this actually really does take me back. And I hope that the experience that people have reading this is that they're encouraged by the story of a very normal person uh, being able to hopefully achieve things that help people um, just like everyone else is capable of doing. So did you feel great emotion sort of when you were reading about yourself and looking at those pictures as if someone had pulled them out of your head? Yeah, absolutely. I think that for me, going back to some of my early childhood, um, often these are actually, especially some of the memories that I, I didn't enjoy particularly much when I was forming them. Um, you know, I don't actively think back to those those days frequently, and to know that those happened and they were a big part of who my personality is and my character and how that was formed. Um, yes, it was an emotional journey to go through that. But that actually prompts me to ask you a bit of a question, Rebecca. Um, you know, you're uh, such a successful and established author um, and you've written so many different kinds of things. I guess I'm kind of curious to know what was it that made you want to write a book in this series um, and, you know, to write a book about someone like me? What, what was it that drove and motivated you? Well, your stories, um, you know, you, you wouldn't think this, but it's actually still quite unique in um, fiction for children, well, non-fiction actually for children and fiction for children, because stories about, you know, kids from our background are still extremely rare. And I just wanted to get, you know, an Australian story which didn't have the typical Australian character in it out there. And it's an inspiring story, Eddie. Like you went through a lot of, you know, like challenging times and you've come out the other end and may I say you're a superstar teacher. So to come through all the things that you went through as a child, um, and then to come out like this in such a generous and giving person, you know, you, you could expect that someone would actually go through bullying, for example, and be really closed off to the world, but it's kind of made you go the other way. So it was a really important story to tell, I think. No, thank you, Rebecca. That's an honour. And I do hope, uh, like you said, um, it's so important that uh, young people growing up have a, a range of stories that reflect the wonderful diversity that we have in Australian culture. And we can kind of see it around us, but it is another thing to actually have that in text and in a way that people can absorb and that they can sort of inhabit this story and, and perhaps even see part of themselves in the journey that, um, you know, whoever, you know, obviously it's a great joy being part of this series with others, um, but there are some incredible people who have belonged to uh, what we're celebrating through the Aussie STEM stars. That's right. And I think, yeah, the topics, not just the people, I guess, like there's a, a very large spectrum of, you know, different people, different scientists, different um, technologists, different, you know, maths teachers. Um, STEM professionals from different backgrounds, but um, it, yeah, it's that whole range of, you know, all the sort of subjects that a lot of kids close themselves off to really early and they find them, you know, like they, they find like maybe they've had one challenge and they just close themselves off to, to doing that for the rest of their lives. But 
um, what you're trying to tell people with your story is everyone can do maths. And so it's a really important to, um, story to get out there. Now, the next question I had for you is, what do you love most about teaching maths? <laughs> I can think of a couple of things in particular and I feel very lucky that I've had the opportunity to reflect on this so often because of course work in general is hard. That's why people get paid for it. It's not easy and teaching maths is no different. Um, there are certainly things about it where I think Hmm. You know, often when I walk into a room, um, especially if people have no idea who I am, I'm just Mr. Wheel, a maths teacher. Uh, maths is a subject which does draw out a particularly strong emotional response from most students. And I should point out, usually a negative emotional response. So that for me is an enormous challenge that's hard to ignore. But that's part of, strangely, um, what I love. Because when I can have the time, like if I get to spend a year or two or even more with a student, um, seeing them day by day and actually helping them develop the skills and the, and the understanding to be able to say, actually, I understand this, I comprehend it, I can do things with this great new power that I've developed. That's an incredibly satisfying and gratifying moment to be a part of, to enable um, a young person to develop skills and to solve problems that they would have thought were impossible otherwise. To me, that never gets old. It's why, you know, 14 years of teaching and I feel like I am at the beginning of my career, still excited every day about walking into the classroom. So yeah, that's probably the first the one, thing. I would say. Yeah, yeah, that freshness, exactly. And then the second one is around Mathematics as a subject itself, not just about the teaching of it, but I, I deeply believe that every different uh, subject, every key learning area, it gives us a lens to understand and uh, appreciate the world around us. And mathematics is really special because it's a language which is literally found everywhere. It's in nature, it's in the built environment. What humans design is often very patterned and geometric. Um, and even, you know, in recent times, living through a global pandemic, mathematics has been one of the most important tools that we have access to to help us, you know, fight this virus and be able to devise effective measures to um, prevent disease. So to me, that's astonishing to give students uh, access to open this world and be able to access those tools. That's pretty special, I think. And that's part of what I love teaching about this subject so much. I mean, that's a big theme of the book and a big theme of your life, seeing the world in a different way. And I guess it's like a superpower. Like once you um, appreciate maths, you start seeing it in everything. And, and you talk about that in the book, about how it's in, you know, sport, it's in carpentry, it's in just about every human endeavour. So, yeah, that's pretty amazing. Now, the next question I had for you is, um, what are some of the most amazing places that maths has led you to? Hmm. So <laughs> this is a tricky question to answer, Rebecca, because how much time do you have? <laughs> um, I certainly didn't expect um, to go, um, you know, say to Dubai in the middle of the Arab world to represent Australia at the Global Teacher Prize, where that prize was one million US dollars. That was a definite pinch me moment. Um, I can actually tell you when I was there at the um, at the prize ceremony, at the award ceremony, and there were 10 of us there up on stage, um, including a wonderful woman named Andrea Zafiraku, a textiles and art teacher from the UK who won that $1 million. And I remember everything was just sort of going along as normal. And then there was a hush that went over the room and suddenly everyone just went very still. And the, the big royal family and rulers of Dubai and United Arab Emirates just walked in with this enormous security uh, detail. And I thought, whoa, okay, this is really serious. So moments like that, definitely, you know, you pinch yourself to be a part of them. Uh, but also for me, and I'm thinking about this actually, this is my daily work uh, and I feel it's such a privilege to be able to do it. One of the things I love most is to be able to travel through parts of our beautiful country, um, especially regional areas. I, I work across New South Wales and I'm about to spend some time in the Riverina. So that's kind of Southwest New South Wales, close to the Victorian border. Um, being able to spend time supporting students and teachers, parents, everyone in the community to, to learn and to love maths. Um, even though that may seem very every day, it's not like heading to you know another country or something like that. For me, that's really special because I get to interact with these people who have gone through incredible journeys, um, sometimes who've gone through incredible suffering themselves, and I get to play a small role in encouraging them and helping them learn. So I love those opportunities. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, we have been through some terrible droughts and events in this country, so it's fantastic that you can bring you know all your knowledge out there um, where students can actually interact with you. I mean, they feel like Eddie's already their teacher because they can see you on the screen but being able to see you face to face is a whole different experience. 
Um, next question was, um, what are some of the great tips for getting better at maths? Because everyone can do maths, right? That's the whole message of our book. Oh, 100%. And if there's anything that people take away, especially from reading the early chapters of the book and knowing where I came from, and that mathematics was not really mainly my thing, especially when I was younger, it's that people should always, and this is one of the big lessons, the big tips, I guess, people should always keep the door open. Um, I think it's, a, it's kind of obvious that there are some things which we naturally maybe have talent at and other things where we kind of struggle along. And for me, it was like a really big light bulb moment to realize then in fact, even if something doesn't come naturally to us, being able to develop an understanding and appreciation of that idea or skill or area of knowledge is in fact all the more important. So the first thing I would say is kind of an attitude thing, right? It's to say, never decide I'm going to close myself off. I'm going to shut that door forever. Um, whether it's mathematics or reading or science, whatever it happens to be, um, to remain open to that. And that does mean you're going to have to struggle a little bit sometimes. And that's part of the journey. It's how everyone who has learned something of value actually came to understand something new. So that's the first suggestion. It's an attitude thing. And then the second suggestion is for me, I think that part of how I, I made that journey from um, not being very much into this mathematical world, not appreciating it to where I am today is kind of ironic. It seems like a bit of a chicken and egg problem. But one of the reasons why now I'm fairly good at mathematics is because I have forced myself over hundreds and thousands of hours to wrap my head around something well enough to explain it to others. Now, at the beginning, I was not very good at it. Um, but for me, it's such a, an embodiment of the truth that I remember first learning from the physicist Richard Feynman. He said, you do not understand something truly until you can explain it simply. Mm -hmm. And so my big tip, I guess, that comes out of this is very practical is if anyone wants to become better at mathematics uh, and indeed better at many different things, uh, my big tip is take an idea, a simple one, one that challenges you but isn't too complicated and see if you can explain it to someone else. Uh, not just like a peer who maybe is learning the same thing at the same time as you, but maybe someone younger or someone who doesn't know very much about this. And because when you try to explain, you actually reveal to yourself, what do I know about this area? And what do I still need to, what gaps do I still need to fill in? Which areas do I need to develop? That has happened to me countless times as a teacher. And it's what's forced me to deepen my understanding um, by forcing myself to explain it to others. So I hope, I hope others can take up that tip uh, and get some practical value out of it. It's a great tip because I actually use that in my own work as well, like trying to get really complex um, ideas into simple words that, you know, kids of different ages can understand. It's the same, you know, technique. So yeah, I, I completely understand that. That's great. Um, now we have a throwdown challenge, which I think, unfortunately, I will probably lose, but let's have a go at this and see how we Fantastic. I really appreciate you uh, are willing to uh, give it a go with me. Um, a lot of people well, are like, the law, sure. <laughs> not at all. We're going to have a bit of fun together. And um, yes, I have a three down challenge for everyone who is watching. And the way it's going to work is you and I, Beck, we're going to play a game. Uh, and this game, as uh, people follow along with the rules, and they're very simple rules, um, even young children can play this game and sometimes play it very well. Um, as they listen to the rules and see us play, the challenge is for others to play this together. So generally you need kind of a buddy or a friend or a parent or something like that to, to play this game with. And I want you to see if you can work out how I did what I hope I'm about to do. And don't worry, I'll repeat all the details at the end. Here we go. So this game, Rebecca, is called The Game of 23. It's one of my favorite games. It's very simple. Um, we're going to say numbers back and forth according to certain rules. And um, whoever gets to say the number 23, they're the winner. Okay, that's, that's the goal. So if, if you get to say 23, you win. And if I get to say 23, I win. Okay, here's the way it works. And um, since you know, I'm, I'm explaining the rules to you, Rebecca, I'll let you start. We're always going to choose a number between one and four. And each time, whatever number we choose, we're just gonna add it on. It's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually one of us is gonna get to 23. So I'll let you choose um, one, two, three, or four. What number would you like to pick? I'm going to choose three. Ah, okay. A classic. Very good. Certainly don't want to choose four. Okay, that's fine with me. All right, so you've chosen three. I'm going to go with, I'm choosing the number two. And you remember I said we're going to add it on each time. So that means the number I reply back to you is five. Following with me? 
Yeah. Okay, so again, you, you have the choice between one and four, what would you like? Okay, um, seven. Seven, so okay, you added two on again, no problem, mm -hmm. okay. Um, this time, I'm gonna go with, um, I'm adding on one, so I'm gonna say eight. Okay. Do, Do I have to tell you what I'm adding on? on? You can work it out. Uh, no, really yeah, I can work it out. So you just tell me what the next speaker. number is. <laughs> so you'll be fine. Um, I'm going to go with 10. Okay. I'm going to go with uh, 13. Okay. I'm going to go with 7. Okay. So yeah, I don't know. All right. I'm going to go with 18. This is where the stakes are getting really high. Okay. I'm going to go with 20. Ah, so you added on two. Bring us to 20, I'm gonna say three, so that I can have 23. Okay, now, well done Rebecca, you gave it a really good shot. I will, I'll give you credit for that. And remember, I know the rules of this game and well, I've, I've known the rules for this game for a very long time and now everyone who's watching also knows. Now, let me restate the challenge just from the beginning, right? Um, I won that game and I won it because I knew something, I sensed a pattern in these numbers um, that was, mostly invisible to you, um, or it was visible and you just played along. So um, the challenge to everyone is to work out, how did I do that? How did I ensure that I would win? Because there's a very simple mathematical pattern and I promise anyone who can add numbers uh, up to one, two, three, four, right? If you can add on four uh, and play this, maybe maybe get a piece of paper out. Um, I encourage you to play a few games. Um, Rebecca, you, you went first that time. If we were playing again, I'd go first and then we'd go back and forth. And I trust that people will be able to work out. There are enough clues in the game that if you know what you're doing, you can always win. So I hope people have a bit of fun with that. Thank you for playing along with me. And I hope people out there can uh, take on the challenge and learn what pattern is hiding within this simple game. Thanks so much, Eddie, for, um, the, for speaking with me today. It's just a pleasure. You too, and, Rebecca. Um, I, take all care. The best, all the best with this book. Oh, Hopefully yes. Hopefully it goes into every school in the country. <laughs> and um, Rebecca, Thank you for putting such time and care and love into writing this. It was a huge privilege uh, to work with you and be the subject of it. So thank you. No worries. I'll be just speaking to you.